elections in Geneva. President Obama himself scheduled to meet Senate leaders tomorrow, urging them to hold off on any new sanctions during nuclear negotiations with Iran. Joining us now, Fox News strategic analyst, Lieutenant Colonel Ralph Peters. Colonel, great to have you with us. Uh, your thoughts about the president's meeting with Senate leaders, uh, Senate leaders, most of whom want to raise the intensity of those sanctions, not diminish them. Well, let me give your viewers the bottom line, because you, you deal with bottom line people. Never put academics in charge of anything ever off the campus. <laughs> Obama is an academic. He's surrounded himself with academics. For them, it's, it's all theory and games theory. Look, your business, your business viewers know that when you have the competition on the mat, you don't help him up and share the profits. Now, we finally are getting Iran in the corner where we want them. Sanctions have been working. It's one of the few times sanctions have really worked. And the idea that just to desperately get a deal for good headlines and get away from Obamacare for 20 minutes, that the president would agree to loosen restrictions on Iran, help Iran out while Iran gives us nothing. Look, Lou, Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel right, is right, and even President uh, Francois Hollande of France, a socialist, flew to Israel to stand by Netanyahu and say the Obama deal yeah. with Iran is the international equivalent of Obamacare. Yeah, and uh, Netanyahu, the prime minister calling France a true friend, uh, making us wonder how much aid and military support they provide to, uh, to Israel rather than the United States. Uh, I, Netanyahu is absolutely just apoplectic about this deal that is, uh, it looks uh, shaping up to be one that the president is going to uh, insist on trying uh, to get the Senate to, uh, to agree to. Uh, let, let's turn to Saudi Arabia. Out comes word in the midst of all of this that Saudi Arabia and Israel are working together uh, to, uh, to prepare for strikes against Iran. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, Saudi Arabia and the Israelis have had back channels going for decades. And the, the more vehement the Saudi denials, the more intense a cooperation is. And right now, the Saudis are absolutely denying everything. Uh, the Saudis are, despite all the money, despite all the weapons they bought from us, despite all the training, are incapable of self-defense. And they realize that Israel is never going to attack Saudi Arabia. But Iran wants hegemony over the Persian Gulf and nukes held over the Saudi heads. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, the Saudis are cooperating with Israel. And let, let me the ask... Saudis are mad at us, too. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Let me turn very quickly because we're running out of time. But I, I want to turn to this reported conflict between Susan Rice, the president's national security advisor, and the secretary of state, uh, John Kerry, who, while in Egypt, refused to mention the name of uh, Mohamed Morsi, defying Susan Rice and ostensibly the president's policy uh, on Egypt. What do you make of it? Scared the devil out of me to say this, but on this one issue, Kerry is right. Rice... <laughs> Uh, is still in love with the Muslim Brotherhood, still wants Morsi back, even though the people of Egypt don't want him back. Now, Kerry's agenda is this. Kerry wants to go down in history as a great statesman. He wants peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians with the Kerry name on it. That means he needs Egypt. And he needs Egypt not only to back up the deal and enforce the pal with the Palestinians, he needs them to clamp down on Hamas, Hamas in Gaza. It's a very convoluted situation. But Rice and the administration, when they come down on the side of Morsi and the Brotherhood, are wrong for America's interests. Kerry, in this case, is right. And by the way, we're still not going to see peace in the Middle East in our lifetimes. Colonel Ralph Peters, thank you. The Obamacare disaster. Is it all just a mistake?